The U.S. Navy is reportedly planning to sail through international waters and pass some islands that the Chinese military has built in the South China Sea. Why is this such a big deal? Center for New American Security senior fellow Jerry Hendricks, a retired U.S. Navy captain, joins the show. Captain, does the U.S. have the right to sail in these waters? And if so, why is this such a big deal? Why all the hand-waving about it? Well, Mary, any Navy, or for that matter, any commercial ship has the right to sail in international waters, and that is what these are. These islands are not, in fact, islands. They're artificial creations. There is no 12 nautical miles uh, limit around an artificial creation. These waters are international waters, and the U.S. Navy is simply going to sail in international waters, as it has done for the entire history of the Republic. Well, the Defense Secretary Ash Carter told Congress in September that the U.S. will do that. We have the right to do that. But then we found out that the U.S. Navy hasn't done it since 2012. So what, why would the Obama administration just allow China to build these islands? What signal does that send to Beijing? Well, it, it, it signals con, uh, confusion, uh, and essentially it signals weakness as well. The fact that we've waited so long to stand up against the, the building of these islands and to confront them. Uh, however, you know, now is the time, and quite frankly, the U.S. Navy is the right instrument. This is something that we have experience in doing, these freedom of navigation operations. It's a, it's a method that we use to confront the Soviet Union when it tries to close off waterways like the Black Sea during the 1980s, and it's something that we've traditionally done. So we know the right type of ship, we know the maneuvers, we know how to perform professionally in this environment, and, uh, and the Navy's going to get the job done right now and reestablish that these waters are, in fact, international waters. Well, they'll get the job done if the White House actually pulls the trigger. Captain, we just showed a map of the South China Sea showing some other disputed islands. China isn't just challenging the United States, it's challenging Vietnam, it's challenging the Philippines, it's challenging Japan. Is this escalation, the classic escalation, like Michael Oslin warned about on our op-ed page this week. Absolutely. It's them trying to establish that, in fact, the South China Sea in almost its entirety is, in fact, Chinese sovereign territory, something that has not existed. You cannot claim oceans as sovereign territory. That's been established since the 17th century, and it's something that all nations of the world have recognized and upheld, that outside of 12 nautical miles from your shoreline, you cannot uh, express sovereign restrictions on anyone else. The fact is, is China is trying to intimidate these other nations in the region. There's vital resources there in the, in the fishing grounds and in underwater energy supplies that they wish to lay claim to. And quite frankly, they want to establish that they are the sovereign power or the great power in that region. Well, we're that letting, something we're, that we, we cannot allow. We are letting them do that, Captain. Is sailing past these islands enough? Or should we show more force in the South China Sea and elsewhere in Asia? This is the first step, and we have to go there, and we have to go there strongly. We have to go there with the right type of ship that conveys the seriousness of our intent. And then, quite frankly, we need to be prepared for the next step. If China chooses to escalate, we need to be ready to come back, not on the next uh, rung on the ladder of escalation, but actually to climb two rungs up that ladder and make sure they understand the seriousness of our intent. Make you do not do half measures. You don't do half measures. The Obama administration needs to stand up. Center for a new American security senior fellow, Jerry Hendricks, thanks for joining the show. Thank you, Mary.